it's so that it's going to to Helsinki and being for six months. And as we were saying earlier with the Czech Gripen, when you've got a relatively small fleet of these aircraft and uh, it has somewhat diminished in numbers over the years, that is a not inconsiderable commitment for the preparation and the deployment phase. Now we're going to see the Harrier start to come into its own in this display with the thrust vectoring that affords the v stall capability. So what have you got on this aircraft to make that possible? Well, there are four thrust vectoring nozzles on the airframe, each of which can be orientated between 0 and 98 degrees. The pilot controls them manually. He's got a separate lever next to the throttle. But also, the Harrier has on it hot air-driven controls on the nose, the tail and the wingtips just improve control at these low air speeds. So, the pilot will now be coming in for a slow fly pass with a nozzle of 70 degrees, the flaps in the stall, short takeoff and landing configuration, coming down to a speed of about <coughs> 90 knots, as proven by the P1127 demonstrator that took to the air in 1916. Then it was on through the pre-production series of aircraft known as the Kestrel, and on then to the Harrier, which entered RAF service from number one squadron in 1969. Of course, this one was such an outstanding use by the Air Arms of
class ADA fees. Lots of this year they brought forward the out of service date. The Italian Navy and the Spanish Navy, both with quite small fleets, left as the last bastions of the Harrier. Who knows how many more times we'll get to see a spectacle such as that. Line up and wait behind the landing carrier. Navy, which was quote for us today by Lieutenant Commander Mario Bellithon Melero. <laughs> 